So the SteelSeries Arctis Pro Wireless is one of the very few remaining headsets that I haven't reviewed for you guys here on the channel over the past year. So now that we're in 2021 and you guys keep insisting on it, I figured I'd go ahead and give you my honest take on this $330 gaming headset. Now when this headset first came out, it was one of my favorite gaming headsets along with the Astro A50 Gen 3s. And what ended up happening was, I returned this headset and kept the Astro A50 Gen 3s for the simple fact that I could only use one source at a time with this headset, whereas with the Astro A50 Gen 3s, I can use it with my PS4 and PC at the same time. Now if you've ever owned a pair of SteelSeries headsets before, I'm sure you're very familiar with this design. It comes in black or white colorways with a ski goggle type headband that helps this headset sit comfortably on your head in those longer gaming sessions. Like the other cheaper models, the band does tend to loosen up over time, not giving you that same snug fit that you're used to when you first purchase them. SteelSeries does still offer headbands for these headsets with different colors coming in at 30 bucks when you need to replace them. Something in my eyes that seems unnecessary when you're spending over $300 on a headset. The build quality is still solid. They're made up mostly of dense plastic with a mix of metal and silicone making up the headband. The ear cups and hinges are also made from that same dense plastic with the ability to swap out the magnetic back plates if they are damaged. Now one of the features that still kind of stands out with this headset is it lets you swap out the battery when the battery is dead. Something that we really don't see too much from with other manufacturers even in today's age. You have two rechargeable batteries, one that sits in the headset when being used and one that's always charging. Each one of them carries a battery life of 10 hours so when the battery dies you can quickly just swap it out. Here's the thing guys, when this headset first came out it might have been a fantastic feature to swap out that battery after 10 hours when the battery dies but in today's age no one wants to go through that same hiccup to swap out a battery pack even if it does only take a few seconds when most gaming headsets have a 20 to 30 plus hour battery life. It just doesn't really make sense, it's somewhat obsolete. Corsair Virtuoso 20 plus hours, SteelSeries Arctis 9 and 9X 30 plus hours, and the HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless are just some of the examples that have a 30 plus hour battery life. So you guys can see how far tech has come along over the past few years. So it doesn't really make sense to use a system like this anymore. Now you are able to use this headset while charging and you are also able to use it wired. So in case you were wondering, yes, these are still both options. Getting it to comfort, there's not much to say. Along with its design, it still feels the same. They've always been a super comfortable option for me. So I have no complaints when it comes to how this headset feels, especially in those longer gaming sessions. Getting into controls, you still have your dial and microphone mute button on the left ear cup. When you're using the Bluetooth functionality, the control dial only adjusts to your volume. And clicking the dial lets you play with more settings, shuffling between audio sources, EQ presets, and channel mixing. Your right ear cup has both your dedicated power and Bluetooth options, and even with a somewhat different design, sometimes for me, it's still hard to distinguish between the two. Now, when this headset first came out, it had some of the best audio performance that you could possibly pick up. It had a frequency response range of 10 hertz to 40 kilohertz. It was, at the time, one of the first high-res compatible wireless headsets that lets you listen to lossless music and games that offer those high-quality uncompressed audio files. Using this headset with my PS5, it sounded absolutely amazing. Still, even years later, this takes full advantage of what today's consoles have to offer. The 3D audio works great in case you guys were wondering, and it didn't need a firmware update for me when I took it out of the box. Hearing those explosions in Call of Duty Warzone sounded decent, I could hear footsteps just fine. I had no complaints with sound quality when it came to gaming with this headset on the PS5. As far as power goes, it could definitely use a bit more punch with bass, but that's coming from someone who is rather bass heavy, so take that into account when you're making your decision. Now if you guys were wondering, yes this headset does work with the Xbox One, but it does require a workaround which I will make sure to leave linked down below for you guys. Now I haven't tested it out on the Xbox Series X yet, but from what I figured out recently, I have a workaround that lets you guys use any headset with any console as long as it is connected to your PC. I'll also make sure to leave that video linked down below for you guys as well. As far as range and Bluetooth capability, you get up to 40 feet of lag for use with this headset. It was fairly accurate in my testing, it's obviously not as capable in terms of distance for today's market thanks to advances in tech, but at the same time it was one of the best when it first came out. The Bluetooth is somewhat still decent, obviously it doesn't provide multiple device support like other headsets out today, but it still gets the job done. They do also have great non-Bluetooth connectivity as well, but the latency isn't as good as what you get with the Arctis 7P or 7X or even the HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless that you can go ahead and pick up in today's market. As far as features and software, you still have the SteelSeries Engine 3 that lets you turn the surround sound on and off, mess with the equalizer, check your side tone, and play with sound profiles. The base station still has all these same features. You have two buttons on the front letting you navigate through these settings, which you can also navigate through with the volume wheel on the headset. It does still have the same OLED display that shows your current status and connection along with your battery life. On the right side, you have your slot for your battery pack, and on the back, you have all of your ports. Starting with your line in and out, your DC for power, 
a USB port, and both slots for your optical in and out cables. So by now you're probably wondering how good is the noise isolation with this headset and how does the microphone quality actually stack up against other gaming headsets that are currently out in the market. Let's go ahead and take it up into the game room and find out. All right, guys, so now we're up here in the game room. This is a soundproof room. If you've never been here before, this is where I like testing out all the microphones on the headsets, the USB microphones, and so on. Currently, I'm talking to you guys on the Rode NT1 Studio microphone. Now, this headset, let's talk about the isolation first. The isolation isn't the best. Honestly, it's probably one of the worst headsets that I've ever used. In terms of isolation, I can hear a lot of noise. I can hear the fans going off behind the computer. I mean, I can hear pretty much myself talking. The sound isolation is not the best, even though it has somewhat of a sealed fit around my ears, I can still hear what's going on around me. So if you're purchasing this headset solely for sound isolation, keep that in mind. Now I'm talking to you guys, like I said, on the Rode NC1 Studio Microphone. Let's go ahead and switch over to the microphone on the Arctis Pro Wireless so you can see what this one sounds like in comparison. This is what the microphone quality sounds like on the SteelSeries Arctis Pro Wireless Gaming Headset. If you guys are new to the channel, please make sure you subscribe. And only if you end up liking this video, please make sure you smash that like button for me. Now let's go ahead and compare this headset's microphone to the microphone on the Corsair Virtuoso, which is the best microphone out of any gaming headset, the HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless, and the Astro A50 Gen 4s. This is what the microphone quality sounds like on the SteelSeries Arctis Pro Wireless Gaming Headset. This is what the microphone quality sounds like on the HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless Gaming Headset. This is what the microphone quality sounds like with the Astro A50 Gen 4s. This is what the microphone quality sounds like on the Corsair Virtuoso Gaming Headset. Once again, this is what the microphone quality sounds like on the SteelSeries Arctis Pro wireless gaming headset. Once again, this is what the microphone quality sounds like on the HyperX Cloud 2 wireless gaming headset. Once again, this is what the microphone quality sounds like with the Astro A50 Gen 4s. Once again, this is what the microphone quality sounds like on the Corsair Virtuoso gaming headset. Now another test I like doing for you guys up here in the game room is to see how much keyboard clicking the microphone on the headset actually picks up. So let's go ahead and do that now. We're about a foot and a half away from the keyboard. All right, so it's definitely picking up the keyboard clicks, obviously a little bit more when I start talking because that's when the noise gate opens up. Yeah, not the best, but I mean, I'd say it's about average for gaming headsets that I test out up here. So yeah, that's what the microphone quality sounds like on this headset in comparison to other gaming headsets, and that's how much keyboard clicking it actually picks up. Now with all this being said, this still is one of the best wireless gaming headsets you can go ahead and pick up today. It sounds amazing, it's comfortable, sure it's outdated, but at the same time when it comes to functionality, there's only a few other headsets out there that can actually compete with the Arctis Pro Wireless. Over the years, nothing's changed. I still like my Astro A50 Gen 4s a lot better, even with their crappy battery life. I mean, don't get me wrong, the Arctis Pro Wireless overall is a better headset, I just like the Astro A50 is better. For most people though, I do suggest you pick up the Arctis 7P or 7X. I mean, they're more than half the price. They're just as comfortable. They sport a better battery life without that inconvenience of having to swap out the battery from time to time. And they sport most of the same functions aside from Bluetooth, which if you need Bluetooth, you can go ahead and still pick up the Arctis 9 that is also $130 cheaper than the Arctis Pro Wireless. Here's the thing though, guys, you have a ton of options out there. Over the past year, we've reviewed pretty much every gaming headset here on the channel. Is the high-res audio on the Arctis Pro Wireless really worth double the price of those other headsets? I don't think it is, but I'll let you guys go ahead and decide that. If money is no object for you guys and you really want this headset and you want the best overall wireless gaming headset, then by all means, sure, go ahead and pick it up. I will make sure to leave all these headsets linked down below for you guys. If you do want to go ahead and pick up any one of them and support the channel at the same time with no extra cost to you. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you smash that like button for me and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next episode. Peace.